we're doing this too often uh, over the last few months. Um, but we're going to start off with, you know, a couple of people that we lost over the last couple of weeks. Um, Vincent Jackson and Irv Cross. Um, so I, I want to just kick it over to you. I know that you have some, some, some thoughts on those, on those two, and I'll let you take it from here. Well, Irv Cross was a pioneer. I remember watching him when I was just a little boy, uh, watching NFL uh, games and he would be announcing the games or he would be in the NFL Today show with CBS. And uh, boy, I, I always admired how he was dressed. He was always well dressed, well spoken. Um, I think the players, from what I know, from when I get got into the league, they really respected him. Um, he had a lot uh, to give the game and he gave the game a lot. And I hope that the game gives back to him because I think he's one of the icons as an announcer and uh, boy, hope he missed, but he's lived a good life. You know, uh, I'm, who am I to say what that number it is, but to, to be 81 is, is, is special, you know, in this day and age. Uh, Vincent Jackson, I, I knew personally, uh, you know, spent a lot of time with him because we were, we were thinking of drafting him. And um, uh, same last name, tease him a little bit about that. Uh, tremendous person ran into him all the time, you know, being in the league. Uh, I'm just shocked. I can't wait to uh, all the reports come out. I was concerned when I read that he was not living with his family, that he was in a, a part, you know, in a hotel. Because first it came to my mind, why? You know, why does a player go stay at a hotel? And then maybe, you know, somebody I talked to thought maybe he was doing something for his foundation. But when they said that he had been there for a while and that the family he was missing you know, that's concerning. And right. then police saw him and said there was no issue. And I, I just, um, I'm concerned what led to that because we don't know. And I, I'm, I'm really concerned because he's right around the age of a group of men that I've been around, you know, and I just want to make sure that you look for signs, you look for things, yeah. you know, in lives that could be potential issues and uh, you try to help as much as you can. But I'm very disappointed, uh, hurt uh, for the family, uh, for whatever this is that drove them to this. And I hope we find out because I think it's going to help a lot of other people. Yeah, I think the two things there, right? Not knowing is yeah. always the part that, you know, you, you hate to hear, you know, listen to rumors and, and those types of things. But when it's someone who's younger and to your point, when you hear it's in a hotel, yeah. your immediate thought just unfortunately goes to something bad. Um, and, and, and not knowing, I think makes it worse. So, uh, hopefully we do obviously find out, uh, what, what were the circumstances around that? Uh, you know, I, I get it. There's people who, whether it's, you know, to your point, if he was doing some work for the foundation, had, had an extended stay or, you know, maybe things just weren't as great at home and he just needed, you know, right. to just get away. Hopefully right. it's as simple as that versus kind of something, um, worse. Right. Um, so we're going to start, you know, I hate that, we, you know, we do have to start about that and it's important that we remember those, those that we, we do lose this week, you had a special guest, um, from a different kind of football, mm -hmm. uh, join you with some, with the guys there with the, at the house of athletes that you're down there in Florida, helping, helping those, those guys out, uh, David Beckham. So tell me about that. He's, you know, uh, you know, in the world of soccer, or as my son calls it, football, uh, <laughs> obviously a huge star. Oh, absolutely. How did that, how did that come about? Um, was he just there, just in the neighborhood, planned event? Well, no, it wasn't planned. You know, if we were over at Inner Miami, uh, so that is a soccer facility. And so this is where we're going to do some combine drills for our particular group of players. So we wanted to take them over there, have them see the field, get, get familiar with the surroundings and all those things. And everybody was on the field. And I was walking on the field and somebody goes, David Beckham's down at the other end. And I go, no, he's not. 
They go, yes, he is. So, you know me, I just, I, I met David a long time ago. So I start charging over, you know, to go say uh, hello. And I go, hey, David, I'm Hugh Jackson. I met you before. And he goes, coach. And so it's like he kind of remembered. And so we talked for a little bit and uh, talked about uh, the facility uh, because that place was flat two years ago. He had a vision along with the people there with his team and they built everything from scratch. Oh, wow. okay. There was yeah. nothing there. And it's a beautiful facility. And when we were there, there were some players practicing the soccer, but he was so um, enamored with football skill and the drills and the things that people were doing. He was just standing out there watching in amazement. And so I said, Hey, I tell you what, why don't you come over and speak to the guys? I said, they would love to hear from you. Absolutely. And he goes, I don't want to be, I'm going to come on, please just, just come on, do, do this for me. Come over and speak. And he did. He came over very graciously. He was very humble man, very thankful. Uh, I mean, just like you would want a, a real pro to be. See, and, I love, I love hearing stuff like that. Oh, right. Yeah, the, he, with, because he could yeah. be the complete oh opposite. And not, he a, yeah, he's, an, he's a living icon. Like I told him, I said, I introduced him. I go, guys, this guy is off the chart special, you know, and he's taking his time to come over here and share with you guys. And uh, because I think it's important for people to see other people who have really did great things in their lives. Because he's an everyday looking guy like anybody else. He just has something in him that's special. And he's played to that and he knows how to access his talent at the right time and it works for him. So but I just, it was great. There's, there's, so there's a question, but first a comment. Cause one of the things that I love hearing is stories about these superstar icons who are actually good and humble because mm -hmm. for the younger guys, it's easy to get caught up in, right? Like if you're, if you're really good, you, you know, they're telling you you're really good from eight, 10 years old almost. And it's, mm -hmm. you're the best, you're the best, you're the greatest, you're the greatest. It gets into your head, right? And through college, you're the greatest, you're the best, you never lose. And listen, you could become arrogant. And then yeah. to see someone like him, you know, who has achieved so much not to be that way. It's a great example because there's so many of the other stories where, oh, you know, I saw this so-and-so and I asked them for an autograph and they kind of pushed me out of the way. And so it's good to hear that stuff from, and then the question was, did he get out on the field with you guys? And because guys who play soccer could help so much, especially your receivers footwork and that sort of thing. Did he, did he yeah, get in there a little bit? <laughs> ah. <laughs> but this is the fact that he was out there. I think everybody was just thankful um, to have a chance to, um, you know, pound the fist with the man, hear what he had to say. Um, it's not every day that you walk out on a football field and there's David Beckham. Right. No, absolutely. The it's players, incredible. I think, were very grateful. Uh, I think they were very excited that he came over. And uh, we were just glad to have him be a part of it. Hopefully, you know, he'll go on I Am Athlete and, and talk. And Brandon came out. They had a chance to spend some time. I left. And uh, it, was, it was great. It was a good time. That's right. Let, let Brandon recruit him. <laughs> I'm going to stay in my life. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good that'd be a good episode to watch. But it was so he was just there, kind of getting a workout in type of thing. Yeah, he was there to coach the other athletes, the soccer athletes. They were on a whole different field on the other side. I like it was about forty of them, you know, and they were going to put them through the paces. I'm sure. I mean, when you do these things, you're looking for the next David Beckham. So yeah. he told me they he was in uh, in uh, London, and um, I'm sure because of the virus. Uh, those things he wanted to get to the States, had been here in Florida, really enjoying himself and having a great time. So how, how's it going down there with, uh, you're working with obviously some guys there. Are, are you prepping them? We haven't actually talked about it too much. Are you prepping them for the draft or just, yeah. Prepping them for the draft, prepping them for what they can look for when they walk into an NFL facility, uh, trying to prep them for what they can expect from coaches, uh, what being a pro uh, is really all about. You know that they're being evaluated every day. Every day is a job interview. They have to understand that, prepare for that. Um, there are no bad days. You know you got to find a way to to grind this out and how to handle if you don't get many reps because you might not. You know, and and if you do get many reps, how do you handle all these things? And so I, I think the guys are very appreciative of the information they got and the, the coaching they have. Now they just got to go put it to use. So this off season going to be, you know, similar to last season, but different again and different mm -hmm. from the typical, you know, off season. There's about two months, 60 days ish until the draft. Mm -hmm. 
let's start we'll start with the player's perspective because there's no there's no combine right so it's not the 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 typical hey i'm gonna get prepared go to the combine do what i gotta do how how are you hearing um like what are they what are they gonna be doing what are the athletes doing right now other than obviously they're going through training with you and those other things to prep for but how are teams you know are they going to come to you are they going to come look at these kind of workouts that you're doing how are they going to get an eye on those guys are they just watching film and hoping for the best anthony you know the film is what matters i mean you're going to draft a player you got to believe in the tape first and foremost i think all these other things that are going on as for coach or uh executive to just really say okay this is who this person is uh like our event will be streamlined it'd be on fox and some other things out on all the platforms hopefully soon enough but um I know this is another opportunity for exposure for a player. This, this is an unprecedented time, so it calls for unprecedented things. I think what's happening, though, players and agents are different. I should say agents are different. I think agents get afraid that players may get hurt in these kind of environments, and I just kind of laugh because it's what they've been doing every day. You know, it's just, it's just training. You know, don't make it more than what it is. It's not going to change. It's just training. And so uh, I understand where the agents are coming from. But I also understand that the players need to take control of this because this is different. You need as much exposure as you can get unless you're the top pick of the draft. People are going to really dig into you more. You know, they're going to spend more time on Zooms with you. They're going to spend more time really looking at that streamlined tape to see what type of player you are. Uh, And so I think you want to have as much exposure as you can, uh, as much uh, interaction as you can with teams so they can try to get to know you because it is different. Yeah, it's funny because I, I have this conversation quite often where I say, if you're starting to be overly cautious, that's yeah. actually when you get hurt. And you never know. I, I think back to, I think it was uh, Ross uh, when he ran his 40, the wide receiver drafted by the yeah. Bengals. John Ross, yes. And he, you know, didn't he, he hurt his hamster or something running the 40. Yes. He had this incredible time, you know, his draft stock shot up the roof because of it, but he got hurt running the 40. So, you know, there's no telling how you're going to get hurt. Just said it. Yeah. I mean, if you're a player, I, I want players who show up and show up all the time. Yeah, I, I just, that's just what I believe in. I just, this is a kid's game. You know, you get paid a king's ransom for playing a kid's game. And I get it. And I would think now at this age, players can go all day. I'm, I now have experienced what, being a little bit older is and what it does to your body and how you feel. That's why I have so much respect for Tom Brady, so much respect for LeBron James. But at the same time, yeah, I'm watching these young guys and, and it's like, okay, well, we might get hurt. What, what are you concerned about? You know, you can, I mean, back, you never worried about those things before. Well, if I tweak this, I can't do this on this day. Well, but you just did it on this day. So who, 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 why does it care? What does it matter? It's funny that you brought up Tom Brady. Uh- we're, Brady and I are the same age and I get hurt walking up the stairs. So I give him the utmost respect for going out there mm-hmm. playing. But at the same time, I was on a baseball show yesterday mm-hmm. and they were talking about the differences. Like the, there's so many specialty pitchers. And one, yes. of the, one of the guests brought up Nolan Ryan. And they said, mm-hmm. look at now, Nolan Ryan was a freak of nature. Don't get me wrong. But they asked how come he could have, he went he, so many complete games. And I said, well, the first is they let him. Right. They let him play pitch nine full innings. And that's, you know, again, he's a special, he might be the exception to the rule, but I said, you're not even getting the chance to throw a complete game nowadays. And and that's why, you know, if you go and play the whole game to your point, practice all the time, you're going to build up, I think that ability to go longer and go harder for a longer period of time, which is, Mm -hmm. I think, important. So that's the players. So for the players, other than missing the combine, I think not much changes for them from coach and an executive. Bar okay, COVID aside, mm-hmm. you know, when you were kind of putting together a roster, working with your, you know, with the execs trying to put together a team, what are you guys doing kind of in this window before the draft? Is it obviously you're looking at the draft and who you're, you know, built, you know, making your board and, and whatever, but mm-hmm. are you a lot of trade talks? Is it roster development? Like, do you have, if we go behind the scenes, if we go into that war room, what would we see? Right. So let's back up for a second because we were saying about the players. I think the biggest thing that would be different for them this year is the medical information. Because hmm. normally they go to Indianapolis and the first thing they do is medical. Everything about your body. 
that's why I still think there's got to be a time where players can be evaluated by NFL medical doctors. And I don't know when that's going to be. I don't know if that's coming up. I, I have no idea. I ask the players all the time and they have no information about that. And um, because what I understood, that was going to be a big part of what the scale back combine would be. They would go there and have the medical information for teams because that's so important. Um, and then, you know, have their pro days or do whatever they do. Now, to answer your question at this time, what are NFL teams doing? I think NFL teams do, are, are really, as you said, discussing how do we better our team? How do we get our team just 10, 20 percent better? What does that look like? Uh, where is the fit? What, what trip potential free agents can we put on the team? Uh, and what is our financial situation that, that deals with that? Are we going to have to let somebody go if we decide to sign on? Uh, a free agent at a key position of need that's going to make a difference to our football team. That's first and foremost. Then you start to look at the draft and you start to find out where is the fit for your football team in the draft. Okay. Is it um, this in the second round? You feel good about this player. If you don't, if you have a first round pick uh, boy, who are we taking at number one? You try to get a consensus that way. If you don't have a first round pick, how do we get into the first round? And if we do get in the first round, is it too expensive? You know, we don't have to really give up something we don't want to give up to get into the first round. All of those things are being discussed and it's, everything's on the table and you have to throw it all up there because at the end of the day, like I said earlier, you're trying to better your football team. So whatever it means, free agency, trades, draft, day trades, uh, trades right after the draft, um, right after you go to training camp, you know, where you're in the pecking order as far as uh, having, you know, uh, first opportunity to claim a player. All those things are really thought out now and you have to stay ahead of it because that's what gives you a chance to, to have a better football team. How involved would you be with the the salary cap? These are, are there, do you have a people that say, hey, you know, here's your list of players that you would want as a coach, as a GM, but here's the ones that you can realistically or the moves you need to make to make the salary cap work. Like, oh, is that, absolutely. yeah. Oh, no, those are those conversations too. It might be guys that, like I said, if I sign this free agent, I might have to cut this veteran player over here because the money would not, uh, for what we're playing for the uh, free agent player, would not jive with the veteran player you have on the team. So, all those decisions are made. Did the, the does the head coaches get into the dollars and cents of it all? No, but you have to know it's your football team, right? You if you want, to, if you want player A, you got to cut player C, yeah, right? Type of deal. Yeah, and yeah. and the coach hopefully has a voice in that. You know, if player A is going to make you better and help you win two, three more games, obviously you're going to want player A. You know, but if he doesn't, you want to stick with player B because he knows who you are. Right. You know. Who he is, you know what he brings to the locker room, you know what he, what kind of effect he's going to have on the team, that matters. Yeah, because the reason I ask is there's a lot of talk about the Saints and mm -hmm. their salary cap situation um, isn't good. And mm -hmm. so it's in, it's interesting to see what what they're kind of going to do next because they, they're going to make some, they're going to have to make some hard decisions um, mm -hmm. over there in New Orleans. Um, one of the names that's come up, you know, so actually let me go back a step. We hear a lot of rumors about yeah. trades, you know, this time of year, how much is real conversations and how much is it, you know, just wishful fans and, you know, people like me hoping <laughs> to drum up, a, you know, something to talk about uh, during the off season. You know, Anthony, it all depends on who reports it, in my opinion. Um, to me, let's take the Russell Wilson situation. They came out and said that there was a conversation. Russell was disappointed. He walked out. Um, then all of a sudden it was like, no, that really didn't happen. And Russ wants to stay, but there's four teams he'll go play for. Right. So Anthony that told me is where there's smoke, there's smoke. Something happened. Right. Okay. Now, how did it happen? Exactly what happened? We'll never know, but something happened. Yeah. You and don't, you don't say these are my four teams if you're planning on staying, right? And people don't put it out there. They walked out. Yeah. This is the quarterback of your football team. You know, so it's certain things you have to read between the lines and know that something happened and they're in, you know, they're, in, they're at odds a little bit. And um, I think we can all understand that. And you try not to ever air your dirty laundry, but somehow, some way it creeps out. 
And so I think we know that it's not the best marriage right now. Can they fix it? Possibly. If they can't, they got to move on, you know, but my point is there is things done, said, things that happen that people um, in these situations get surprised by. And, and I would tell everybody, don't be. Yeah. Speaking of surprises, um, we're going to get back to Russell Wilson in a second. J.J. Watt signing with the Cardinals. Did that catch you off guard? Yeah, it did. Um, but it, it also was understandable once it happened. I mean, it's a need uh, for the Cardinals. And it's a veteran um, guy with a lot of skins on the wall who's, who's done a lot of great things in the league. Another really good player in the locker room, uh, a leader, uh, a guy who's just itching to, to, to win. And so when you can get those kind of players, you have to take a shot at them. And obviously it's not like they outbidded everybody for them and because uh, they wanted to play. And so that's what I'm saying. When you are sitting in an organization, you're sitting around the table with the coaches, there's a few key pieces that are needed in order to turn the team. Normally it's a quarterback, right? I mean, you take the most important positions, the quarterback first and foremost. And then people would tell you it's the offense and defensive lines. Because if you can't rush quarterback, he's right. he going to back and throw it. And if you can't protect him, he's going to get hurt. You know, so those things are important. And so you look at where he fell in this situation in, in Arizona, and they needed another rusher opposite Chandler Jones. Okay, so here it comes. Here comes J.J. Watt. He commands double teams. Can he play 16 games? That's the question. Um, what do you do to make sure you get your value for him? Do you play 12 of the games and spot playing the other four, you know, and see if you can get everything out of him? Maybe you do whatever you need to do that to, to have him have the success that he's had. But I, I was not surprised by it, but uh, it, it shows what teams can do if they really are interested in winning. That, and that's a division that I, you know, way too early, but assuming Russell Wilson stays, that may be the toughest division in football, right? The, the NFC West. I think it, it I think it's kind of unknown now. I think, yeah, I, see. I think it's a tough division. I don't disagree with what you're saying, but who's really going to play quarterback in San Francisco? We know there's a new quarterback in LA. There could be a new quarterback in Seattle. Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean? So there's a lot of pieces that are roaming around right now. And, and it's yet to be determined who's really staying, who's going. Once that happens, then I think it will be a very good division. I know there's some really good coaches in the division who do an outstanding job. So it's what makes it one of the best to be. I uh, immediately, when J.J. Watt signed, I was like, oh, all they got to do is trade for Watson and they'll get uh, Watkins, Hopkins, and J.J. <laughs> back together again in Arizona. Arizona-Houston. <laughs> They're going to be looking, yeah, <laughs> the Arizona-Houstons or the Arizona Texans maybe, which yeah. actually, you know, I lived in Arizona. That's not that far off. No, um, but uh, that would be an interesting dilemma. I don't think that's going to happen, however. Russell Wilson talked about it a little bit. Do you think if you had to, if you were a betting man, would you – Bet on him staying? Going. Going. Really? Going. I think uh, at some point in time, um, I, I forget what year this is for Russell, but at some point in time, things go sour, sour everywhere, you know, and he wants to be protected better. All he's saying to the world is, I can't take the hits I've been taking over the last several years. You can't keep putting basketball players in front of me and yeah. thinking that I'll have protectors. That was some quote. <laughs> yeah, and our offensive line just keeps getting just powerful. And, yeah. and to me, that's true. He's not the same young, spry-legged guy he used to be. So he needs to protect, be protected better. And he wants to throw football. So I think there's, a, um, there's probably a schematic difference in what he would like to do and what they would like to do. I think there's a difference in how they see building a team. And I think that's shown over the years. They really don't play, play offensive line. They feel like they can find them and develop them, and that's what they do. They pay everybody else, which is good. But at the same time, if you're paying the quarterback, you're a franchise quarterback, you don't want to get hit like that. So I understand where he's coming from. Uh, and I just think at this particular point in time, sometimes you have to let that veteran quarterback go before you want to sometimes because it's what's best for the football team. you know. And you got to figure that out when that is. And I just, from everything I hear, like I said, well, there's smoke, there's smoke. Right. And the more you hear about things, the more things will trickle out, the more we'll understand it later on. 
when we look at the teams on the list, you know, the Saints was one were one of the teams. Mm-hmm. With the Saints, I don't think know, they can. Uh, they can't do it, right? There's no. I, I almost say they're out. If he wants an offensive line, does he go to Chicago? Possibly. Do you think that's a possibility? Where I on the four? It's better than what he's had. I mean, yeah. I think that's what the players look at. It. Am, am I getting 15% or 20% better than what I've had? Then right. I, I, it's okay with me. You know, uh, the team that, that to me has the most allure for him is the Cowboys in my mind. Right. Because you have um, a good offensive line. You have weapons at receiver. You have a proven running back. Okay. You're inserting a all pro quarterback in the lineup. And I mentioned that because I don't think they want to pay Dak Prescott. And now that Dak Prescott's come out and said what he's looking for, right? Then hey, kick rocks, you know. Yeah. We, we, so it yeah, is we, we talked. I think we talked about Dak, Dak last week or the week before, and we both said, "Hey, he's a great quarterback." Patrick Mahomes money? It's yeah, hard. that's that's it's it was hard to give it to Patrick Mahomes as yeah. to, to give it to anybody it's else. It makes you kind of cringe a little bit. Below that, yeah. That's what he, and I don't know what does that mean a dollar. I've seen some right. players on my contract be one dollar more than this guy. Is it a dollar less? Who knows? But my point is, I don't think the Cowboys want to pay it, whatever it is. So I got it. I got to interrupt you because you said sure. something, and I, I don't want to forget. Do, sure. do have there actually been players say I want one dollar more than him? Oh, there's no doubt. Oh, there's no doubt. You hear it, but I never actually. Oh, oh no, it, it's competition. You know, and I hate to say it. I mean, I'm better than that guy. I, I hate my agent. I need you to give me one more dollar than that guy. Okay. And I'll take the deal. I, I've seen that before. So it's, it's amazing, but uh, I can see um, Dak moving, which means the Cowboys have to get a quarterback. Right. A real, I mean, a real quarterback, nothing against anybody that's played there. I'm just saying they need a, a, a real proven commodity at freaking quarterback in order for them to get back to where they need to be. So, I can see this Russell Wilson thing really happening, uh, potentially. Now, there's some other teams. I don't see the Saints. I don't think they can pay it. Right. Um, those other three teams mentioned, don't I? I wouldn't rule out the Raiders. One thing about John Green, he loves quarterbacks. You know, and that was one of the teams that was, was you know, talked about. So none of that surprises me at this particular point in time. I think what's happened in basketball, I think uh, you, you start to see that it's trickling over into football. Guys are being more vocal about where they want to play at, what they want to do. And some of it's manifesting itself and happening. So I'm not surprised. Yeah. Well, you know, hey, look, they're fr- it's not like the olden days. And I may be going way back where the person <laughs> on the other sideline was my enemy on and off the field. These right. guys hang out. They go to charity events. They, you know, they play <laughs> golf. They do, they become friends. And, you know, especially in basketball, it's, hey, it's not just the team or the city I want to play in or for. It's I want to play with this person person that's you know I, I like to play with and it's funny that you mentioned the Raiders because it was the I was going to ask you so David Carr Derek's brother came out and said if I was the Raiders I'm paraphrasing I would trade Derek for Russell kind of odd to have your brother <laughs> offering you up on a, on a trade but it is it would be you know, no no offense to Derek Carr but it would be an upgrade right oh yeah I think uh and that's that's Derek doing this I mean David doing his job I mean he has to be fair. I mean, it's hard, but you got to be fair. But Russell Wilson's a better player than his brother. And he's won more games and he's done more, you know, so it improves the Raiders, you know, and, and it would. I think we all know that. But at the same time, what is that going to look like? You know, again, we went, go back to the question we talked about earlier. How do you fit that, you know, within your team structure? Mm-hmm. Who do you have to get rid of? I mean, who do you have to let go uh, what what player do you have to restructure his contract and his agent and you don't get along? You know, it's just, there's so many dynamics there that you have to work through, but at the same time, when you have a chance to acquire those kind of talented players, whether it's Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, you do what you feel like you need to do because those guys don't come along very often. Yeah, as much as I, of course, would love to see him on the Bears, when I look at the Cowboys and the Raiders, they both have things that are going to help uh, mm-hmm. Russell, right? That's got a wide receiver. Uh, uh, the Raiders have a really good tight end. They both have, obviously, I think Zeke is better than Josh Jacobs, but they both have good, solid running games. So they've got a lot of the pieces as a quarterback. You know, that's mm-hmm. what I would think you would look for. 
I've heard tonight that uh, Ryan, somebody said, it wasn't Ryan Pace himself, but it said that the deal that the Bears are going to uh, put out for Deshaun Watson, nobody else can match. And I'm curious as to what that could be. You know, um, that's, that's going to happen. That's what it sounds like. I'm, not, I'm talking about as far as the offer. Um, will the Houston Texans accept? Who knows? But uh, just the fact that it's come out, I think it was Jeff Darlington that reported it and said that the Bears offer, nobody else will be able to do it. Well, well it's funny. We were all hoping that we were going to get an announcement of a trade at the press conference today. Um, mm-hmm. But we just got to, you know, basically said, hey, we're going to do this. And right. my fear is, look, you always, I feel, uh, you always overvalue your own players. Mm-hmm. And when I looked at some of the potential offers, you know, Akeem Nix, um, the cornerback, I forget which, uh, uh, Fuller, right? Mm-hmm. And then a ton of picks. I'm like, you know, the Bears defense was completely different when Hicks mm-hmm. wasn't on the field. Right. Uh, oh, yeah. And so it's, it's kind of scares you a little bit because that's been the strength of the team since I've been a fan for mm-hmm. 30 some odd years. And it's like, oh, do you want to give up that much? But then you're like, well, yeah, it's a quarterback. So, yeah, I do want to give up. The, right. Well, you you know, hesitate for you know, a second. The, but you know what comes to the biggest question, Anthony, is, OK, if we give up a King Hicks, can we still only give up 20 points? Can we give up 20 points and score 30? Right. Because of Deshaun Watson. And if we can, it's a great trade off. Yeah, we're not going to be in the top five in defense. We'll probably be in the middle. We'll be 12 or 15. But we'll, you know, we'll stop teams from scoring. We'll hold them to 22 points. Can we do that stat? Can we create something that's good enough to do that within our division? Those are the discussions that you're saying, what's happening today? That's what's happening behind closed yeah. doors. Well, to, dig- to know. Yeah. Well, the good news is, not the good news, but he had missed so much time last season that they finished in the middle of the pack anyways. So it would mm-hmm. be the same type of defense, hopefully, that with Watson. True. That's that thought. What is it? We already know what it looked like. Yeah. What it looked like, you know. So we've had an example. Let's go back and watch that tape. So you go back and watch that tape again, and then who can you get in free agency to fill the void? Yeah. You know the, that can play. Maybe not. Probably won't be as good as Akeem Hicks, but somebody who will for three or four games play as good as he did. Whatever that is. Yeah. See, that's the stuff that I wish I could be like a fly on a wall to listen to those conversations it, because it those good. are the you, you you've sat in the room, you've heard it. That those are the best conversations right they are they're the best but they're also the most um um volatile because everybody people see it differently you know and that's why you have to have the right vision you know and who's leading the vision and it's one thing like i said before if you have a vision as a gm and i have a vision as a head coach and if it's not aligned you got a problem because right. the the coach cannot coach for the gm and the gm cannot draft players for the gm you got to draft players for the coach. And that's just, that's the way those things work. If you don't do that, there's no chance of it work. Yeah, I think, uh, I forget, I'm sure it was in some some football movie where the GM said, look, I draft the players, you coach the players. And yeah, yeah it's not that simple, guys. Like, they're, they're pl- different players fit into different systems, right? I've said that before. You know, people say that talent, I will say it again, talent doesn't fit everywhere. You know, and, and that's the reason why, in my opinion, we've seen so many quarterbacks not do well they've been put in unfair situations that don't fit them and so you never see their real talent come to the surface like a la patrick mahomes you know he was in the right system for his talent and they've taken advantage of him yeah you know, it's funny because it's 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 so easy to look back and ask what ifs right right mm-hmm. if patrick mahomes had been drafted by someone else would he you know and didn't get to sit under alex smith right? A very good veteran quarterback. Would he still be the same player? If, you know, I still think Aaron Rodgers would be Aaron Rodgers, but if Aaron Rodgers didn't sit behind Brett Favre, right? Let's say he went to a team like, I don't know, Houston at that time where he was getting sacked, you know, six, 600 times. Is he still the same player? Um, Speaking of quarterbacks, you and I talked about um, Cam Newton and a good fit for Mm -hmm. him being the Washington football team. But I heard this week you said another quarterback might be a good fit in Washington. Um, yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that Sam Darnold um, would be a fit. And, and I say that because of ties to people. Uh, Kenny Zampezi is the quarterback coach. Uh, he, he was an SC guy. 
Uh, North Turner's son is the coordinator. They've been around the SC guy. They're Southern California people. So I think there's a relationship there. I think he's talented. He's a young player. Needs to be in a great system. Needs to be coached. If that's what it is, boy, that would be a tremendous fit. You know, uh, that's, again, that's what I hear. Uh, you don't know, like you said, so many rumors that get thrown out there. But then when I look and see who's there, it makes more sense to me, you know, because I know that those people know who he is and what potentially he can do. Yeah, it's he's been one, and I've told you this before, that I feel like he just needs a new situation because I, I it just he was in a bad place it didn't fit his his skill set but I, I again I could be totally wrong but I still think he's a really talented and young quarterback that in the right system I think would be very successful and people would be like and it, people would be surprised like, oh wow he's actually good now yeah, he's always been good it just it wasn't the right situation I totally agree with that I mean just like Trubisky I really believe that people are going to see a better performance out of Mitch as he moves forward why no one has really went back and seen because of everything he's been through the last couple of years he's had to learn some things about himself and learn how to if he's going to survive in this league be different you know mm -hmm. and so now is when if you can get him and put him in the right situation he has a chance to have success and he also has a chance to fail don't get me wrong he still has a chance to go the other way but sure. at the same time, you would think now he's about to trend up because he hadn't played a lot of football, you know, in college. Here he is learning, playing in the National Football League, became a starter. Here he is learning. He's got his butt kicked up over his shoulders a couple of times. He's been benched. He's been through all that. He has some talent. He can run around. He has a he has an arm on him. So where is the disconnect? You, you got to find it, you know. And so uh, I think it was because he just didn't have the experience. Yeah. And I think he was, you know, uh, maybe, you know, as tough as people thought he was. Um, because he didn't play a lot of football. Yeah, it's, it's, there's so many examples, you, you know, and you don't have to look too far. You look at Ryan Tannehill in Miami. Everybody wrote him off. He goes to Tennessee, has a great year. Different. I, I think back to another Bears quarterback, Jake Cutler. I think there was a stretch where he had six different, you know, Coordinate. offensive coordinators and, and QB coaches that so underrated, you know, this as a former QB coach, right? Like that just the, 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 the the what you that relationship you build with your QB coach to have them constantly turning it's it, you can't it doesn't work yeah so okay so, so some, it, yeah because you brought up something just then that really hits my mind because my whole thing is so uh Tanny Hill played well with Arthur Smith Arthur Smith is gone now yeah they kept it in-house great but now Arthur Smith goes over to Atlanta what's that gonna do to Ryan to uh, Matt Ryan but that he might not be the fifth for the system they want to run. You know, just people don't understand. That's what happens, you know. Um, you look at uh, Zach Taylor in Cincinnati. Well, he got the quarterback going, but nothing else is going. Right. You know? So you you got to determine all these things as an organization about what's right. And normally when you're doing it, it's about the quarterback. If the quarterback's performing good, you give people more time. If the quarterback's not performing good, you got to get them out. You know, yeah, because, especially yeah. if you think now the quarterback. And and sometimes you do you catch lightning in a bottle, and it Ooh. makes me think of Mike Martz, mm -hmm. right with the Rams. He just had a fit with Kurt Warner and Isaac. You know those that team that fat you know greatest show on turf, mm -hmm. and then again he went to the Bears. Jay Cutler. Oh, he has got a cannon for an arm. He can make all the throws. Yeah, it didn't work. It's not the same. You know that your even your system can't work everywhere. That's why when I said to people, I mean, I was a pro football writer's offensive coach of the year. Okay. I go to Cleveland, and when you look out there, it's not AJ Green, Marvin Jones, Mo Sanu, Tyler Eifert, and Andy Dalton at quarterback. You know, there was a whole different cast. I had Terrell Pryor. You know, Terrell Pryor was the best receiver we had. He was the one that had 1,000 yards. You know, and people. But he, was, but he was a quarterback. Thank you. So that's what I'm saying. <laughs> he was a quarterback. And he was, a, he, at that time, his best receiver we had. And he had over a 1,000 yards receiving. So in my mind, Andy, that's coaching. How do you get a guy to play quarterback a 1,000 yards who's never played receiver before in his career? So that tells you something, you know. And so that's why I keep saying about fit and, and coaching, you know, because it all got to 
work hand in hand. If it doesn't, it just doesn't work. And um, people got to understand that. I mean, like I would be right now, just not to, I'm not trying to unload on Chicago, but here, here's Ryan Pace. You know, he, he's still sitting there and you drafted Mr. Bissett. And we've seen what Deshaun Watson and, and Patrick Mahomes has done. Well, you're going to have to explain that to me. Well, listen, I'm, I'm not, I will rip on Chicago because I got the <laughs> helmet back there. I'm allowed to. But not only that, but you wanted Marcus Mariota. You signed Glenn, Mike Glennon. You drafted Mitch Trubisky and gave up a, a ton of draft capital to move up one spot really? where you probably could have got him anyways if you just stood back. And you signed Nick Foles. Right there, there, there was, you know, it's like four strikes in, in my book. There's so many of these situations, whether it's the Rams with golf, Philly with Wentz, wh- who's responsible for these things? Is it the coach or is it the, the scouting department? I mean, where, where is it or was it, you know, we just, we missed this one, you know, but that's a lot of misses and a lot of money. Yeah. The pro- now I will say the, the one with the one with pace, I, uh, you know, I've read a lot about it obviously. And it's, he just fell in love with Mitch really early. And I think that's a horrible thing to do because when you, you know, we're married, when you fall in love, you, you, you miss a lot of the faults <laughs> and it's okay in a marriage. Not so good when you're marrying a quarterback. Right. Well, I mean, I hate to say it this way. I know Ryan Pace is a tall man. He's a big man, but him and Mitch look alike. Oh, I, oh yeah. <laughs> See, so yeah. that's it. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, those, and you just said it though, uh, Anthony. A lot of people don't get it. People do fall in love with things. You know what I mean? People look and say, God, that guy is me. And boy, he's, he, he, he's gone through some of the things I've gone through. And boy, did, no, I, I know I used to do it. I mean, I'm from inner city LA. I always thought I could save every player, I could save them. You know, they had a problem, Hugh Jackson to save them. Well, I mean, and for the most part, I could, but there was a couple I couldn't. But you can't fall in love for those particular reasons. It's got to be, again, about the fit of the team, what's best for the football team, and all those things. And, and we all make those bad decisions. Everybody does. Yeah, no, it's, it, find me someone who's never made a bad decision. It'll probably find you someone who's never really lived, right? So it's... Yeah, that's how you grow. All right. Um, we're going to switch gears a little bit and okay. t- talk about a bunch of stuff. And a couple of them are NBA related, but they, they're going to lead us into kind of a conversation I want to have. I'm going to start with the good one, um, or maybe maybe a good one. A lot of talk uh, this week specifically because Kyrie Irving came out and said, hey, we need to put Kobe Bryant a- as the new logo. Jerry West has come out and said, I'd love to see it. I never asked to be the logo. A more humble superstar, by the way, than Jerry West. I, I don't know that there is one. Um, he's like, I didn't want to be the logo. I don't even like the name. Best nickname, I think, in sports, mind you. Um, how do you feel, LA Laker fan? Obviously, you know, we both big fans of Kobe. Is that the right move? Or is it better to just have a generic silhouette or leave it the same? I change it. Change. And I said this is so many of today's players, all of them, who are playing in the NBA, they identify with Kobe Bryant. And I think players would, not that they don't have a lot of passion about that, that emblem right now, I think they become more passionate about it. I think uh, it's almost like the NFL should it means something. I'm not saying that it doesn't mean anything right now, but I think it would mean more because of who Kobe Bryant was, what he brought to the game, what he brought to communities, what he brought to kids. I just he embodied everything you would think that 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 symbol is about I'm not saying that jerry west wasn't because he was but at the same time it's time to move it forward and i think kyrie said it and i'm not trying to speak for kyrie for a couple of reasons because the majority of the national basketball association is black it sounds just like the national football league i mean they want something that they can call their own that's what i feel and uh, I, I i would hope that they move in that direction yeah, you know, as you know, I've said this to you before, Kobe's my favorite all-time player. So obviously I would love to see that. And it's funny because when he was playing, there was always the stories about people not liking Kobe and no one wanted to go play with Kobe because he was so hard on them. 
But when you look at the flip side of Kobe, Kobe wasn't, and he was the first one to say it, he wasn't the most skilled player, obviously coming out of high school. He wasn't the most athletic, you know, player coming out of high school. And what did he do better than anybody else? Work, right? The Mamba mentality, that work ethic that, you know, that showed any, granted he was still gifted in so many ways, but he worked so hard. And I think even what he did after retirement, right? He, you could see all these players, the Trey Youngs of the world, the Kyrie Irvins, who's said, you know, he took me under his wing and he helped me with, you know, footwork with this, with that. And you hear all these great stories after the fact, and it's unfortunate that you hear it after the fact. You know, it's so funny to me just listening to you lay that out. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm being honest. I mean, you, I, I'm a Kobe Bryant lover through and through always will be till I'm not walking the face of this earth. But hearing you talk about his process and who he was sounds exactly like another sounds exactly like Michael J. To a T, everything you just described, how hard he was on others, how he worked, how he wasn't the best when he was in high school, how it, it sounds just like Michael Jordan. I mean, it's it's amazing to hear you say those things, but that's what they are. Yeah. They become, they, they chase it. It becomes their all-consuming passion. And the guys who will be that are in the Hall of Fame, that's what they did. It became their all-consuming passion. I'm sure some of these stories would run parallel if you talk to people and you ask them, what did these guys do when nobody was looking? And how did they act in practice? They were di- I could tell you that Ray Lewis was different in practice. It was like a game for him. Maybe not everybody else, but it was for him. Mm-hmm. That's why he's in the Hall of Fame. And people don't get that. They are different. It's it, I, and I get passionate because it's you're right. You know, I grew up, I grew up watching Michael Jordan, idolizing Michael Jordan, yes. and I started playing basketball. I didn't even pick up a basketball till my freshman year in high school, but I did it because of Michael Jordan. And and then I realized I can never be Michael Jordan. But then here comes Kobe. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna live through him because he's close. He could he could be there, right? So it's, I, I think it would really. I think it'd be a great thing to do. So uh, let's hope they, that they do it. Oh yeah. There's two things I want to happen in the NBA. There's two things. One, I want Kobe to be the logo. And I've heard Jordan and I said, you know what? Jordan has his Jordan brand. You can't have the Jumpman logo. There's too many business things there. So you can't. So I, I think Jordan would even appreciate it being Kobe. I'm speaking yeah. for him now, but I think he would love that. Um, the other thing I'd like to see is when LeBron retires, and I joked about this in the year 2020, uh, 2030, <laughs> when he retires at 50 years old, um, I'd like to see the number 23. Just, uh, you know, Jordan, LeBron, and just retire it from the league. That might just be me, but I think, you know, you there's, if these are the two guys that, I mean, I get death threats in my inbox because I said <laughs> Jordan's one and LeBron's two. I kid you not, coach. Right, they're clearly two, if not one, two. They're two of the greatest players to ever live. Both were 23. Obviously, no. LeBron wear, wears it because of MJ. It's time to put that number to bed. No, um, I mean, I, I totally me. agree. I, I don't, I don't think people will do that because the, the number is people don't want to wear it. I mean, well, like, but think, well, hold on, coach. I, like LeBron wanted to wear Michael Jordan's number. I, I hear mean, that, but but hold on, Miami's already retired it. Mm-hmm. Chicago's already retired it. Mm-hmm. I believe the Wizards have retired it, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, because he they, played there. Because he played there. You know Miami. Sorry, Miami's it's already gone. Cleveland's going to retire LeBron's 23. Mm-hmm. The Lakers mm-hmm. are going to re- retire, I would assume. I hope he, they will. If he retires a Laker, they're going right. to retire his 23. You already got five, six teams down. That's already like 15, 20% of the be, league. That's going to be some real decisions at the Lakers. Though. I say that for this It's reason. tough, right? Yeah, for this reason, Kobe and Kareem and Magic and those guys were on those Raptors. They won multiple championships. So he needs to, that's going to be the discussion. How do you do this? Yeah, hey, he brought basketball back to the Lakers. Oh my gosh, yes. He's one of the greatest ever to play the game. But to be up there with them guys, man, you got to win multiple championships. And he has a chance to. He has a chance to. He has a great chance. So, and if he does, man, I'll be all for it, hook, line, and singer. If, but if he doesn't, if AD, if AD stays healthy, yes, they always have a shot, right? With those two guys. Yeah. 
No doubt. No doubt. Although I will, so I am torn. I will say this because I also do really like what Dallas does where they do like the mm -hmm. ring of honor. And, mm -hmm. you know, you see these guys getting like, I always think of it's Michael Irvin's 88, but I know it's not Michael Irvin's 88, but 88 mm -hmm. and what comes with wearing that number for that team. Right. I really like the way they do that too. So, uh, right. you know. Oh, yeah. No, and that, and to me, there are some other teams that do that. Uh, they just don't publicize it. But uh, it, it, it's, uh, I can't wait to go back into the Raiders building someday. I know I'm probably just being off, you know, just because there's so many great players that played there and they used to kind of honor the guy that wore the jersey, you know, yeah. and really who he was, what he did, where he came from, what he did in the National Football League. I just, it gives me goosebumps talking about it because there's been so many great players that have walked uh, the halls of, of Oakland, you know, they never did it in Las Vegas. Maybe they did it in LA, but they never did in Las Vegas. And, but they have some unbelievable plaques there in that building about those players. Do you, do you think you, I, mean, I know you'd still kind of talk to some of the people in the Raiders organization. Is there talk about bringing that kind of history, that stuff over to, to Vegas? Cause the stadium looks, you know, I've been to Vegas a few times as they were building it. It looks phenomenal. It but I think fun. that history, I think, is important to bring into the, you know, it's great to have a great body, but it's it's even better to have a nice, you know, the heart and the guts inside, right? You said it, Anthony. I, I've made this statement, in it, and I, I love John Gruden. Love him. He's like, well, he raised me in football. I say that to everybody all the time. But I also was a head coach at Raiders, and I sat at Al Davis's knee. And the history of who the Raiders are, that's not who they are today. Right. Let's just be honest. I mean, they were big, physical, nasty, tough, and could run all of them. And they played one defense, and they did a lot of things on offense, but they played one defense. And they've gotten away from that. The Raiders used to always have great corners. They always had somebody that could rush the quarterback up front. They, but they were known for great corners, long, tall, athletic, that could run all that. You don't see that anymore. Okay, And on offense, that big physical lineman, which they still do, but boy, they have receivers like just out oh, the they, they, they had track stars. They, what they had was track stars, yeah. They had track stars who could play, though. Yeah. And so now all of a sudden, you just, you, they do, rugs is that. But you didn't play much last year. So that's what I'm saying. I just feel like it's not what it used to be. And so history, in my mind, it, and again, it's one man's opinion, you have to go back and repeat history. History is what the Raiders are. Get them back to that being what, what they were back in the day when they were very dominant and dominating that division. I just think that's important. We're going to stick with the NBA mm -hmm. uh, because another story that came out this week was about Masai Ujiri. Mm -hmm. And you remember when the Raptors, they were in Golden State, uh, game six, they win the NBA championship. He tries to get on um, onto the court to celebrate with his team and he gets shoved the security guard says, oh, he shoved me first, lawsuit. Then we see all the videos start coming out. And it was clearly the security guard who was the aggressor. It took a long time, I felt, for the NBA to kind of come out. And Al Adam Silver, finally, you know, it's been, what, almost a year and a half, almost two years, um, and apologized to, to Masai. Do you think, did, did they have to wait that long to get all the evidence? Or should they have backed up, you know, one of their best general managers and said, hey, we don't think this is something that would have happened. Should, should they have kind of come to his aid earlier, you think, or? There's no question they should have. Because uh, I think that video, you can get faster than what yeah. they made it. I think the Adam Silver thing, if I'm not c correct, you got to correct me if I'm wrong. He made a statement someplace else because they hadn't finished the investigation and everything. And it made it kind of sound like he was kind of putting down uh, your jury. That's what it sounded like to me. And he had to come out after that, after really watching it and seeing and knowing exactly what happened and apologize. And I think Adam did it the right way. Hey, could he have seen uh, this information sooner? Uh, like you said, could he have, you know, stayed uh, true to uh, one of his uh, GMs that's in his league until it was really proven that he, the GM was wrong. I think there's all kinds of ways to do it. What I, what I really appreciate though, is once something was said that was wrong, he, he, he owned it, you know, he was wrong and uh, people make mistakes. I mean, those kind of mistakes we can deal with and live with. Um, it didn't feel right when you first looked at it because you have a, I hate to say it, a Caucasian cop pushing this black man who's you, you got this 
GM, I mean, the owner, uh, the, the commissioner, I should say, of the league was a white man, you know, who was saying, wait a minute, you know, we can't be having this kind of behavior, you know, regardless of what goes on. Oops, I made a mistake. That sounds like somebody else we know. Okay. That sounds just like Roger Goodell when we're talking about Colin Kaepernick and him taking a knee. Okay. So it's the same stuff. I keep saying to people all the time, it goes round and round and round and round and round. And, and I'm not saying it makes people bad people. I'm not saying people are this or that, but we have to be a little bit more intentional and thoughtful and mindful about the things we jump on. Because I remember uh, uh, Jerry was getting killed by the media. I know. Yeah. I mean, and you're there. I mean, he's getting killed by the media. Like it's his fault. Like he created this because his player wanted him to celebrate with them. Are you kidding me? I mean, what is wrong with the freaking GM going on the court when he wants to? He's not going to hurt the game. He's trying to be there to celebrate with his team. It, you know, so two things. And I think maybe I hold Adam Silver, and maybe I shouldn't, but I hold him to a higher regard than Roger Goodell. No offense to the NFL, but I just, he's handled most of these things better. History yet, right? <laughs> right, just, just history, yeah. Just so I hold him to a higher standard. So it was, it was surprising. With the Masai Ujiri thing, once it happened, I, you know, being here, there was local play-by-play uh, -play guys who said, I walked out onto the court, I'm a, you know, six foot, I think he's six, eight, Leo Routens, said, I, I didn't show my press pass, I just walked out onto the, you know, same kind of suit, nice suit, I'm a tall white guy, I walked on, no issues. Mm -hmm. Masai Ujiri gets shoved and told, no, you can't go. I go back and say, well, hold on. You're the general manager of the team. The security guard should be escorting you onto the court. You shouldn't have Absolutely. to fight your way through the crowd to get onto the court. You would think they would have him and, you know, they'd be taking it. They'd escort him on. They have face recognition of these people normally in their possession. You normally have a card of head coach, GM, assistant coaches, because you know the players are because they're in different yeah. kind, of, kind of uniforms and whatever but you have a card that tells you what these guys look like. So you don't make that mistake. So and, it's a and, and you saw the video, right? He's pulling out his press pass. Why not wait for him to pull it? He's not pulling out a gun, right? He's not, he can see it. So that, that you know, I guess the whole situation, because it, it brought it back up again for me uh, this week and having Adam Silver apologize, it's fine, he should have. But, and it brings up two issues for me. It was one, and this goes for everybody, it seems like we are so quick to make everyone guilty. Yes. And and then you never hear, that's why I wanted to bring up the apology. You never hear the apology in most cases. You never hear someone say, oh yeah, we made a mistake, this person. It's once you've been kind of branded with he or she did this, that's with you. It's with you forever. And, you know, cause some, you know, you gotta write, read the little fine print where it says, oops, we made a mistake. Mm-hmm. And I know you're thinking about something because I see you scratch. It, it, it just, it hurts. To, I mean, I, I, I love these conversations we have, but boy, it brings up so much stuff from the inside. Like you're saying, I mean, here we were in one of the biggest, worst, hardest times of our lives in 2020. Not because of the pandemic. Pandemic is what it is. It was all the social injustice that was going on. And it goes back to just what you just said. We all of a sudden think the worst first, as opposed to leading with our hearts and love and kindness. You know, if we did that, half the things that happened never would have happened. Never would have happened. No different in this situation when, like, I mean, you made me think about Adam Silver differently. How, why didn't you make sure you saw the video? That, that, that's your job. Make sure you saw the video before you ever said anything. Okay. Well, okay. We're going to give him a pass, like you said, because this, he seems to be a very outstanding man. He's handled things right. All of that. But at the same time, what's different? He did the same thing. And, you know, nobody died from it, but we watched the guy be falsely accused. Like he did something wrong for the longest and the commissioner wasn't backing him up saying, no, no, no. We will get to the bottom of this. We will investigate this. We'll know for sure. And if he's wrong, then we'll have a conversation. If he's right, then we, you know, we're going to take this. We didn't hear that. We, we never heard that. And to me, that's, that, it's the same stuff that goes on 
everywhere, Anthony. I just, that's what bothers me. I just, I just saw the same stuff everywhere. And the one thing we've talked about is that with all these things happening, people, especially people with influence, need to speak out about it. And yet, and I'm going to say his name wrong, Zoltan mm-hmm. basically oh, told LeBron James wow. to shut up and dribble. Basically, wow. he did the same thing as that you know, Fox News reporter from years ago said, said, hey, don't use your platform. But isn't that why you, what you should do when you have a platform? Yes. yes. So basically, he was trying to tell LeBron James to shut up. And LeBron James, I mean, you're talking to the wrong guy. I mean, just like Barry, you heard what you saw what Baron Davis said, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But they don't play. I mean, you you can you can start that fight if you want to with LeBron, but that's not gonna work. The people in LA won't go for that. Uh they just won't that and the basketball community won't go for that. So <laughs> yeah, and you, well, there are a few guys in the NBA that are jealous of LeBron. Don't the let's let's be honest, let's be real about it too but at the same time i think at the at the right time they're they gonna fight for him I oh, think yeah. they gonna, you know well, what he is. it's it's funny because you brought up michael jordan and the only kind of knock on michael jordan was that he didn't speak up he didn't use mm-hmm. his platform now he's used his money and his influence okay. to do other things but right. he was never vocal about it just wasn't in his character and that's okay not mm-hmm. everybody is that kind of person right but the criticism, so I'm going to ask you about this. So the criticism about LeBron James by people who say, no, I'm, I'm glad that he speaks out, but how come he only speaks out on certain things? The big well, one is being like China as the example. Um, do you, I think if you, how, how do you feel about that? Is that, can you pick and choose? Yeah, you have to. If you become the voice of voice all the time, you get tuned out. Right. Uh, it's, it's just LeBron talking again. You know, it, I think you have to be very strategic and really attack the things that matter to you most and, and let that be it. If you tackled everything, I think you'd get tuned out, not just by fans, but also by players who are in the league. And so I think he's strategically doing things the right way. You know, uh, there's no doubt about it. I just wish there was more people in the fight with him, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and really with every night, uh, keep bringing things up. We can't, I'm gonna say it again, and we've we me and you've talked about it so many times. There's so many things that we still uh, have let go uh, and not really attacked anymore since they were very at the heightened time, and that's disappointing to me. You know, we can talk about pandemics, uh, we can talk about um, you know making sure we get this this check, you know, all those things. What about all the injustices that still going on? And then where's the answers for something? And we, we don't, you know, it's just, it's gone. It's, whoop, we're, we're back to normal the other way. So that's what scares me. Yeah, and you, you brought up, and I'm going to give you another question, but you brought up a good point. It's, I, I relate it to my kids. If if I yelled at my kids for everything they did wrong, they're going to they're gonna not listen to me anymore. You got to pick your battles. Oh, yeah. And that's why when I hear that argument, well, how come, you know, he's standing up for this thing, but he's not talking about that thing. And you're right, is if he talked about everything, no one's listening. And look, I don't know his opinions on China, um, but you've got to talk about what you're passionate about yeah. because you'll know. When, you know, you, you got heard it in my voice. When I started talking about Kobe, oh yeah, it's a different voice. Kobe and the Bears, everybody yeah. better look at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I talk, I, I, it's different. But you have me talking about, I don't know, I don't want to pick on anybody else, but you ask me about something else. And I was like, yeah, well, you know, it is what it is. It right? is what it is. <laughs> still, you know, still, still important, but yeah. yeah. Um, so you sent me a video. This is the last thing I want to ask you about. You sent me a video uh, about a man. Uh, I guess he was, ch- he charged out of his house. There's some two police officers. Um, and, and, and I want you to tell, you, you saw it, thought enough to say, hey, I'm going to send it to you. When you saw that video, one, what went through your mind? Like, rage. To say, hey, I got to send this to Anthony. Why? Rage. It's, it's the same old, same old. I, 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 there's other videos of a white man who was on, seemed like he was drugged out, walking towards the cops with guns, and they didn't shoot him. He was an older man, and I won't forget it. I watched it, and they did not shoot him. They were very, very generous in trying to get him to stand down and back up 
and we don't want to have to hurt you. We don't want to have to do this, which they did not. I mean, he was walking towards him, kind of going after him, and they didn't shoot him. This guy's sitting in his car, and you kill him. It doesn't stop, and it doesn't stop. And, and well, we thought he was reaching for something. What was he reaching for? And you weren't even close enough to see what he was reaching for. I just, I, when does it stop? How does it end? When does humanity look at life and say, man, th this is the greatest thing we can do is live, not die. You know, and I just, I, I was hurt by it. I was just, I was hurt. It, it, it was difficult to watch. I um I didn't get through it the first time. I stopped it and then I I, I watched it again because I it was difficult. It was difficult to watch, and my fear is we're you know we're having these conversations and they're important. Mm -hmm. Yet I don't. I feel not. I, I feel it's actually not getting better. I feel like you know there were these protests and a bunch of people talked and people wore some shirts and you know they had a cool slogan and some really great things. But it, I feel like all it did was divide people more because what, you know, I'll use Black Lives Matter as an example. They came out and said Black Lives Matter. Well, all lives matter. No, this wasn't a thing to create separation. This was a thing to, you know, I actually, to yesterday, someone asked me about what Kyrie Irving had said about Kobe. And he mm -hmm. said, why does it have to be a black man as the logo? And I said, I go, I don't know that it was a, you know, I understand it's he's Kyrie Irving is a black man looking you know, and saying, here's my idol and 70% of the league. And yeah, I, I understand why Kyrie said what he said. Oh, Kyrie's crazy. Crazy. It's just like the Black Lives Matter people. And I, I'm, you know, crazy enough to engage. I go, what are you talking about? Why can't it be Black Lives Matter too? And I went, what? He goes, well, that would make me feel a lot more comfortable. Make if me? Yeah. 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 That's, that, that's where I was going. He said, that would make me feel a lot more comfortable if they said Black Lives Matter too. <laughs> and I just, I, I don't, I didn't even know how to respond because I don't know that I can get through to you. Um, to, you know, like that, so it would make you feel better if they said two. Yeah, that, that, and that was the whole, and, and because of that, now you're just going to push kind of that equality that he said, because he started off by saying, I'm all for equality, but, you know, it's like saying, listen, I'm not a racist, but anytime yeah. you hear that, but it's, it's bad news, right? He said, I'm all for equality, but why didn't they say two? And I said, if that's your issue, right? Every time they say it in your mind, say two, right? right? And Please. just do and do what's right. If that makes right. you do what's right, go ahead. Absolutely. So, you know, I don't know if you get that stuff because I know you're you're better than me. You don't read that stuff when it comes to you try not to. I try um, to do it. When you hear stuff like that, what like do you just I just I, I try not to like you say engage. I try not to really you know, in my mind, people are sometimes they speak before they think. You know, they never think, but they just say what's on their mind, you know? And I think sometimes when people realize, God, I probably shouldn't have went that far. And then, but it's too late, you put it out there, it's out there, you know? And I just, I try to give people the benefit of the doubt for what it is. I just don't have the patience to be arguing, and, you know, going back and forth with somebody. I, I like my day too much, you know? <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna engage. Are there some things that light my fire? Absolutely it does. And I just, you know, sometimes you wanna fight, but at the same time, I just, there's more times that I just let it go and uh, move on and say, hey, I hope that person has a great day. I really do. Yeah, I'm not popular enough. I try to engage with everyone who engages with me, right? I think it's important. You are um, popular. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, Coach. Uh, but no, but I, you know, part of what I want to do, like that's why I wanted to do this with you every week and mm -hmm. have these conversations. And, you know, you know, we are going to be bringing some people on as well to have, you know, these conversations was... I want more people to understand that there's 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 not just two sides. There's like 12 oh. sides to every story. And yeah. all and all you need to do is listen and try to understand versus just defending your, you know, what you believe. I you know, I've said this to you before. Did what you, you believe is scary. Podcast. Did you watch it yet? The sorry, say that again. 
the podcast that you watch it yet with the Chad. latest the latest one yeah. i'm i'm 10 minutes in i'm gonna i saw that i obviously saw him get really emotional and i'm like right. oh this is gonna be a good one i want to give it my full attention so i have not but i i think tonight is when i'm watching it right but it was really interesting to me because a lot of people i'm sure that that listen to you everybody has their struggle you know and uh when you lose someone of that magnitude as a mom, you know, I, you know, Chad's like a son to me. Uh, I always check in on him. I always try to make sure he's okay. But I can go back and think about my struggle. Like, I mean, I lost a brother, a mother two weeks later and then my job. I mean, people don't get up from that sometimes. And I'm just grateful and thankful for people like yourself and others who've been in my life past all that that have given me an opportunity to keep moving forward because I know what that's like, you know, and he's right. You just keep fighting through because that's all we know. That, that's, that's what football's done for us. You just keep going. But at the same time, you've got to deal with that hurt because it's a hurt and you've got to get through it the best you can. And uh, sometimes people don't get through it, but I want everybody to know you can, if you're, you know, if you surround yourself with the right people, and you truly, um, you know, really mourn, get through it. And uh, then you gotta let it go. You really do. It's, it's you know, I've, I obviously read that about you. We haven't, mm -hmm. you know, oh, gone yeah. into it deep, mm -hmm. um, but it is something that I have these conversations because I know people who've lost oh, and they goodness. have, and they don't deal with it, you know? And I said, it's gonna hit you one day. If you try to just mask it and cover it and ignore it, one day it's going to hit you like a ton of bricks and that's worse, right? At least if you deal with it piece by piece, mm -hmm. it's going to hurt, mm -hmm. but it's that hurts going to be stretched over a period of time. And then you can deal, you know, you can get some help. You can talk to people. There's ways to deal with it. If you just wait, it's, it's too heavy for any person. And, you know, one of the things from the clips, like I said, I didn't get to watch the whole thing, but where he said, look, we're taught all of us, not just athletes, but I play basketball, I played football, but I'm also a man. And what do you hear? Don't cry. Don't right. show your emotion. Don't have, you know, these feelings, you know, just, you know what? I always found that it's, it's the, it's the manlier man mm -hmm. that can deal with it. And if you, if you need to cry, you can cry. Oh yeah. I've and, always asked harder sometime and I got to stop. What are you crying for? I, I really do. But yeah. because girls are supposed to be okay to cry. I don't see it that way. I mean, I want to know what you're crying for. And if it's right, okay. But if you're just crying to crying, I just don't think that's a good trait, in my opinion, because I think that's what girls and women do. You know, I, I just, it doesn't, it doesn't register in my book. Ever. My, my daughter, uh, they're turning seven on Friday. Mm -hmm. And my son and my daughter, you know, I have twins. Exactly. And yeah. my daughter is, is a crier. Uh -huh. and, and I always ask her the same question. I'm okay with her and my son crying, right. but I always right. want to know why you're crying. And she'll look at me, say, are you bleeding? No. Did you hit something? Does something hurt? No. Okay. Are you sad about something? No. Why are you crying? Oh, well, my brother didn't let me do this. I'm like, that's not a reason to cry, right? <laughs> if he hit you, right? Or if something's hurting your feelings, I'm okay with you crying. If he didn't let you play Roblox, that's not, that's not worth crying over. All right, so it's, it's, it's there, you know, there's levels. So your wife says to you, hey, Anthony, it's okay for her to show emotions. I'm not trying to stop her from showing no, emotions. No. Oh, my, no. <laughs> I, 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 I'm very, I married a, a wonderful and a woman, but a tough cookie. She's, she'd be the one who's like, cry. Yeah, she's, a, she'll be, she'll be like, why are you crying? She's, a, she'll ask it before I ask it, though. No, it's, uh, but yeah, yeah it's, when, when it's appropriate, right. you know, there's nothing wrong with it at all. Absolutely. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go watch that episode actually right now and have a good cry. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> like <yeah. free. laughs> I'm you assuming enjoy. you. Yeah, you enjoy it. I just, that to me is what's needed more uh, where men can really let their guards down. And I was thankful that that night those guys were there. I was, I was there for a moment. I left early and uh, I got a phone call later saying, boy, we wish you had stayed for him. I'm like, what happened? And then I, I heard about it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, and, but I tried to surround him that whole time. I, I text him every day, see if he needed anything. What can I do? And I knew he was going to say nothing because that's just who he is, you know, but I always try to dig a little deeper. Okay. Talk to me, you know, but uh, he is, uh, he's like all of us. We're, I think we're all built that way. You know, we want to get through it ourselves. We're appreciative that people call and check on us, but at the same time, 
it's like you've moved on, you know, you're trying to move on. You don't because you still have to deal with it, but you're trying to move on. And I, and I just, I'm thankful for, for those men sharing that with each other. I, and like I said, when I saw the kind of preview for it, I knew it was going to be a powerful episode. When I saw mm. Chad um, crying, I, I immediately thought, you know, I know that you're down there. I, I was wondering if you were oh, yeah. there. Um, mm. um, Cause that's, you know, that it takes a lot to do that, but it, you know, in front of just your people, but to do it on camera in Ooh. front of the world to see that's real emotion, real emotion. You can't, you can't control yeah. that. Cause he's trying to hide that. He, of course. Just, he doesn't want that out. You can't stop it. Sometimes when it's that deep and it's in you, you can't stop it. You just can't, it's going to come up and it manifests itself in other ways. If you don't get it out, just like you said, I, I moved to four different countries um, <laughs> trying to run away from stuff. So it's uh, you got to sometimes just stop and, and deal with it. And, and that's the only yeah. way it, that's the only way it works. We'll maybe yeah. get into that another day. <laughs> Absolutely. Sir, I love it. <laughs> All right, coach. Th okay. thank, thank you so much for your time. Bye. 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 Bye.